hey viewers welcome back to my channel in this video i will be sharing a case study on shoulder dystocia so let's start shoulder dystocia comes under uh, intranatal case study intranatal means uh, during delivery so here i will just read out the content so that if you if you are facing any difficulty with my handwriting you will figure out through this audio Okay, first biographical information, name, Mrs. Ramaya M, age, 26 years, sex, female, IP number, education, religion, occupation, family income, date of admission, obstetrical score, date of delivery, mode of delivery, LMP, EDD, diagnosis. So the diagnosis is shoulder dystocia. Shoulder dystocia is, uh, it is a medical condition, emergency medical condition during normal delivery, normal vaginal delivery where the head is delivered but the shoulder gets stuck into the pelvic brim and it is not delivered. Now what is the chief complaint? Chief complaint is prolongation of labor. Okay. Normal labor duration in a primary mother is 6 to, uh, in a primary mother it is uh, 10 to 12 hours and uh, in a multigravid mother it is 6 to 8 hours. And prolongation of labor termed when it is more than 18, 16 to 18 hours, then it is termed as prolongation of labor or prolonged labor. And painful uterine contraction means uh, the abdominal pain that is arised during delivery, it will be much more painful than the normal pain. Present health history. So here the present health history is the head is delivered but the shoulder gets stuck so that the head pops back into the vaginal canal. Now past health history, there is no significant past medical and surgical history. Menstrual history, that is age of age at menarche 13 years, duration 3 to 4 days and frequency 28 days. History under that age at marriage 21 years, types of marriage non-consanguinous. Here it will be non-consanguinous. Then duration of marriage 5 years. Okay. Then family history, here you can write that there is no significant illness among the family members. Antenatal history, first trimester she had been suffered from nausea, vomiting, fainting. Then second trimester got va vaccinated with injection TT1 and TT2 and hyperglycemia. That is increased glucose level, it, it is 180 mg per dl. Then third trimester, it is backache, constipation, painful uterine contraction. Personal history under that, habits, no habits of alcohol, tobacco, etc. Sleep pattern, adequate. Bowel and bladder elimination, it is regular and increased micturation. Increased micturation means uh, increased urinary frequency. Then weight, 105 kg. The nutritional history likes both veg and non veg foods. Appetite is good. Then, hygiene maintained types of house, book house, and language. Labor history onset of labor 6 pm, rupture of membrane spontaneous. Lie longitudinal position LOA, left occiput anterior. Presentation vertex presentation denominator occiput. Mode of delivery, normal vaginal delivery, duration of labor 20 hours, blood loss 600 ml, placenta weight 500 gram, uh, here you can write um, complete placenta also, then perineum, performed episiotomy, date and time of birth 19-5-2022, pm, then gender of baby male, birth weight it is 4.5 kg and Apgar score in 1 minute it was 6 by 10 and in 5 minute it was 9 by 10. Now physical examination under that general appearance body build is obesity. Activity well active, conscious, consciousness, patient is alert and conscious. Then weight 105 kg, vital signs, temperature 98.4 degree Fahrenheit. Pulse 78 beats per minute, respiration 18 beats per minute, pulse pressure, sorry, blood pressure 116 by 78 mmHg. Head and face, under that, hair are evenly distributed and scalp is free from dandruff, no facial edema. Eyes, eyebrows are symmetrical with even distribu distribution, 
no infection on eyelids conjunctiva pale sclera white is in color and visual acuity that is normal 6 by 6 ear no significant presence of any discharge or infection in the ear then hearing acuity normal nose no significant natural discharge or infection hmm. tongue and lips are dry in appearance no evidence of bleeding gum test is normal neck no significant presence of enlarged lymph nodes or thyroid gland chest infection symmetrical chest movement palpation no tenderness percussion no fluid accumulation auscultation s1 and s2 heart sound heart extremities upper extremities no significant presence of any lesions lower extremities presence of edema on both legs then unable to perform rom exercise rom range of motion exercise genito urinary and rectum increased pressure on bladder increased frequency of micturition then presence of vaginal discharge and no perineal infection abdominal examination during pregnancy abdominal examination is most important first infection contour of abdominal wall oval then skin changes presence of linea nigra and steria gravidarum then fetal movement present palpation fundal height 39 semi abdominal girth 100 semi lateral palpation under that left there is continuous hard muscle that indicates spine right irregular soft mass that indicates extremities fundal palpation presence of soft mass indicating the buttock and pelvic cliff head is engaged and pelvic cliff head is flexed auscultation fetal heart heart sound present and fetal heart rate is 150 beats per minute no lab investigation test parameters patient value normal value and remarks so hemoglobin 13.3 gram per dl normal value is 11.5 uh, to 16.5 gram per dl total wbc 10500 cells per cu mm and the normal value is 4000 to 11500 cells cu mm then blood group b positive rbc 77 mg per dl rbc sorry it's not rbc it's rbs random blood sugar then urine albumin nil urine sugar nil hiv 1 and 2 no non-reactive and hbs ag negative vdrl non-reactive medication under medication rl solution here the drug name dos dosage root action and nurses responsibility so rl solution given ringer lactate solution 500 ml root is iv action maintain fluid balance to prevent uh, dehydration during daily during labor then nurse's responsibility rl solution is administered then injection sent to 2 ml it is im for in induction of labor and it increases uterine contraction uh, nurse's responsibility is check vital signs continuously then disease condition in case study we need to write disease condition also so here the definition shoulder dystocia is defined as the failure of shoulder to, to spontaneously transverse the pelvic ring after the delivery of the head it is two types uh, severe and mild under severe that is bilateral and uh, mild is unilateral so unilateral is one shoulder is delivered and another, another got stuck and severe is uh, bilateral when the both shoulder gets stuck into the pelvic frame then bilateral dystocia both the posterior and, and as I already told unilateral dystocia now risk factor <coughs> here the book picture and the patient picture maternal dm diabetes mellitus then maternal obesity post-term pregnancy exclusive fetal weight that is more than 4.5 kg past history of shoulder dystocia prolonged second stage and fetal macrosomia that is overly large fetus clinical feature under that slow crowning fatty cheeks turtle sign restitution is slow and does not occur usual down usual, usual down traction that does not result in appearance of the anterior shoulder 
then vascular congestion of the face and vaginal X is difficult. Management Book picture is Call for help Clear neonates mouth and nose Avoid 5P Panic, pulling, pushing Pressure on the fundus Pivoting Improving pelvic dimension That is evaluate for Episiotomy MC Robert maneuver Then disinfect Disimpact fetal shoulder That is suprapubic pressure then rotation of shoulder, all four maneuver, delivery of posterior arm if all fails, then cladotomy and symphysiotomy. Complications of shoulder dystocia, fetal complications are death, cerebral hemorrhage, brachial plexus palsy, then fracture clavicle, mental retardation, speech defects, maternal injuries, it may be perineal, vaginal or cervical, then postpartum hemorrhage, and infection this disease condition you can write from DC Dutta's textbook um, 7th edition page number 406 406 nursing diagnosis under that deficient fluid volume related to heavy bleeding during delivery anxiety related to situational crisis secondary to shoulder dystocia as evidenced by increased tension restlessness then ineffective individual coping related to situational crisis secondary to shoulder dystocia as evidenced by inability to cope and irritability risk for fetal injury related to shoulder dystocia and risk for maternal injury related to shoulder dystocia now care plans Nursing diagnosis is anxiety related to situational crisis secondary to shoulder dystocia as evidenced by increased tension and restlessness. Nursing interventions are promote a calm and quiet environment, rational, it decreased unnecessary distraction and anxiety, then allow the significant other to stay with patient to provide comfort and support and assistance then supply the patient with the needed information considering the ongoing labor progression and eventual delivery of the baby it decreases unnecessary apprehension and anxiety that could affect the labor and delivery process so evaluation the client followed the instruction conveyed by the healthcare team Fluid volume deficit related to heavy bleeding during delivery as evidenced by low BP, painful uterine contraction. Nursing intervention monitor vital signs, start input and output monitoring. Ascertain progress of labor, evaluate level of pain in relation to dilation and effacement of cervix, give IV fluid as per physician's order and support, support and give encouragement to the efforts of client. Rational, low BP pain are associated with blood loss to monitor circulatory volume. Prolonged labor can decrease ability to manage contraction. Extreme pain may indicate anoxia. <coughs> then to prevent dehydration to reduce client's misconceptions. Then risk for maternal injury. Nursing intervention assess the patient risk for vaginal tearing and bladder damage. Rational shoulder dystocia may cause vaginal bleeding. Then monitor client's level of consciousness. Then prepare the patient for immediate surgical intervention to delivery to deliver the baby with shoulder dystocia. Heavy vaginal bleeding may result to hypotension and lower level of consciousness. Consciousness then an episiotomy prevents tearing and open the birth canal, allowing more room for the baby to pass. Then evaluation protective measures are followed by the client during treatment. Now health education. Instructed the client to avoid over tension and follow measures conveyed by the healthcare team. Encourage family member to be with client to promote comfort, support and to reduce anxiety. Encouraged client for deep breathing exercise. Don't push on the fundal area. Then give, give adequate, info, adequate information regarding labor process. Then advise to drink plenty of fluid after delivery of the baby. 
explained about episiotomy and its purpose. Then bibliography, DC Dutta's textbook of obstetrics, seventh edition, page number four zero six to four zero nine, and uh, some information I have collected from slides and net also.